Take a look over there. We can see Christian Horner sitting around a table. Uh, he's actually uh, chatting to his wife and a few friends as opposed to anybody more important than that, David. Maybe that's the way to get things resolved. Speak to the family and they'll help you out. Do you think we need to have a word with Christian? Well, do you want to go over and have a word? Do you think will we bring him over? Why don't you go and see if he'll you chat to you, Ed? The great British public would like to speak to you. Are you going to... Come and join us. Go on then. Come on. We know you looked so grim and gruesome before the start of qualifying. Surely first and second on the grid has sort of changed that perspective just a little bit. Come on, you yeah, see, no, break absolutely. into a smile for us. Absolutely. Come on. Absolutely. No, it's been a uh, been a busy day today, so um, it was nice to get actually into the Grand Prix weekend, and I spent most of the weekend with Charlie Whiting. Yeah. We've just heard that we believe that this directive is going to disappear and the cars will return to their Valencia spec after this weekend, Christian. If indeed that is the case, what a strange, difficult and disappointing thing to happen this weekend to overshadow, you know, what was an interesting qualifying session in the rain and what is a great homecoming for Formula One to the new Silverstone? Yeah, I mean, we not just us, but I think most of the teams have been desperately trying to deal with this prior to the prior to the weekend. But um, yeah, it's a very difficult and uh, technical subject. And, and putting yourself in Charlie Whiting's shoes, it's very difficult for him to be able to judge between one engine and mm. and the other. And so I think actually the solution that he suggested today is a compromise that you know it's difficult for the teams to reject. We all ran reliably in Valencia. And it seems to be the most logical thing to go back to those settings. I suppose you also have to spare a thought, though, for the FIA that the teams will exploit and push the envelope as far as possible. Obviously, it will sometimes get to a point where the FIA aren't happy. They need to be able to do something. They can't have their hands cuffed until the end of the season and then say, oh, from next year, we'll sort that out. So what, what is the way going forward to make sure this doesn't happen again? I think clear regulations. I think the biggest problem with this is effectively you're looking at a rule change mid-season. Now, when you design your car at the beginning of the year you enter the championship under a set of technical regulations. And I think they've, they've managed to get themselves into a little bit of a, a pickle over this mm. because it's such a complicated subject. And I think with where the exhausts are on these cars, it, it has a, it has a few, huge knock-on effect. And effectively, we're running here in a, in a mode that isn't optimized to our yep. gear shift strategy, to our reliability, and obviously the additional benefits that you see from the exhaust blowing. So we've accepted that for this weekend on the basis that it will be addressed you know in time for Nürburgring okay well that's the rather disappointing and very technical aspect of this weekend the good news about this weekend and the reason why Christian will smile when I say this and the reason why that there is a buzz in here is because Mark Webber is on pole position for this race